Welcome to a new edition of the Neon Jazz Interview Series with Israeli-born and Boston-based alto saxophonist Benny Sharoni. These days, he stays quite busy with gigs and promoting his impressive new album called Slant Signature. Growing up in Israel, he talks about accumulating a love of music and of jazz, along with why he settled on the alto sax as his instrument of choice. Over the course of our interview, Benny made it very clear how his roots led him to the point he is at today in both life and music, along with who his jazz heroes are and what is going to be next on his journey, along with much, much more. Dig it, my friends. First of all, I want to thank you very much. I love your disc. I love your music. Thank you for taking man, a little time to speak me, It's with an you. honor. It's an honor, man. Right on. So let me just jump right in and ask you what I, I can tell you're pretty busy these days. What's been going on lately? Well, we, you know, we, we always try to, to write music and record, and we always try to, to, to actually do meaningful uh, performances. And by meaningful, I yeah. say performances and gigs that are actually concerts, not, not gigs that are like restaurants or bars or pubs or, you know, where people come to drink and they don't pay attention to the music. So that's the main goal, I guess, for now. And, uh, you know, the rest is the usual, you know, trying to get better every day, practicing a lot, you know, writing new music and uh, living a life of a musician. So your latest release, Slant Signature, is a beautiful album with uh, Jim Rotundi. Talk to me a little bit about the creative energy that went into this, kind of from the conception of it to today? The answer could be long for this. Basically, I, I started thinking about getting a trumpet player and, and, and started thinking about connecting what I would like to actually convey on this re the record and, uh, and, and the music that I really wanted to record. And I had in mind three, three tunes, three songs, three compositions by, by giants like uh, Freddie Hubbard and... and and a composition that's called Tonk, Tonk, and uh, and one more, Siora, which is by Lee Morgan. Actually, these these are three songs that were influenced by by three great trumpet players. And uh, I just wanted to record those tunes, and I thought, wow, you know, I, I should try to call Jim and to see, because I, I actually never talked to him, and I I didn't I, I didn't know Jim before this recording. And I called yeah. him and, and asked him if he would like to do this record, and he was so happy to do it. And it was an honor. It was great, you know? It seems like there's a real communal kind of feeling with jazz musicians. If you reach out, they feel like they want to be a part of it. It's kind of one of those things where everybody's just trying to help each other out. They love the creative forces that go into it. Uh, yeah, I would say it's a little more complicated than that. I mean, you have to be respected, I guess, as yeah. a musician for, for, for somebody to, to come and record with you. And... uh it's a it's a really tough business if you can call it a business I don't know but it's a really tough adventure that we all go through and 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 money is a very difficult thing in it and and therefore the only thing that's left I think is love you know love for the music and uh, absolutely if somebody if somebody has an opportunity to record to record real music and 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 uh, uncompromised jazz and they can get paid for it you know it's a beautiful thing absolutely. So yeah. speaking of the love of music, how is jazz in Israel? How is it received? How do people embrace jazz? Oh, man. That's an incredible question, and the answer is even more incredible because, you know, Israel, for some reason, there's so many great jazz Israeli, Israeli players, so many great musicians from Israel that actually play jazz, and they're so good at this music. And the young ones, I don't know how they do it. Um... They're just, I think, the free spirit in Israel, and and uh, it's just so so tremendous. And, and and people in Israel are very spontaneous, which is a great, it's a great, it's a, a very important training in jazz. If you if you're not going to be spontaneous, you can, you might as well not get into this into this business. And you have to have heart. And a lot of people there have a lot of heart. They live the moment because of the circum circumstances and because of of the where where these countries located and all the problems that that we have there and and you know the other thing is people go out people go out at ten o'clock at night to listen to music and if it's something that's going to be interesting they're going to come and see you they'll give you a chance and so it's there's a lot of love for for that kind of music it's 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 wonderful I mean I'm not going to say that there's a lot of money in it right because that's always going to be a problem but uh, 
but uh, there is a lot of love and and people people go out and listen to music and if they like it they will come and tell you that it's great and and uh yeah so it's safe to say from a very early age with that love and fervor for jazz it's just kind of been woven into who you are well when i grew up i grew up in israel i i think it was um, let's say 30 years ago 35 years ago when i started getting in, into music Jazz wasn't what it what it is today. Today, there's no boundaries, yeah. you know, in this in this in this world. Uh, everything is everywhere. YouTube, and you can you can online if you're online, you can listen and you can you can try to figure out by yourself. You don't. Back then, it was a little different, but yeah. uh, but uh, today, certainly, uh, music is everywhere. Jazz is everywhere. There, um, all kinds of music and and all kinds of deep deep thinking and deep thinking into music too. How do you feel that that kind of ease of access to music has made music? You, I mean, you said that now there's kind of there's no boundaries. Has it made it? Yeah. Has, has music been made better because of our access to YouTube and and a more clear um, avenue to get it? Uh, you know, I I really don't have the answer. I think I think certainly it is because people can. Everybody has has an opportunity to 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 go online to listen to any any type of music and to try to imitate it right away and you don't have to travel to the US you don't have to travel which is where the the birth of the best music come from you don't have to come here to to study this kind of music you can be you can be a monster musician anywhere in the world um just just using your computer you can come and listen to it and if you love it you know you can listen it over and over and try to Emulate it and until you until it becomes you. Absolutely. So absolutely yes, I think I think so. I think I think the answer would be yes. But I think it's really important to also learn learn from from masters and for you know to go to concerts and to really listen to great musicians. You know and absolutely so, absolutely. Yeah. So going back to the beginnings of your life and getting into jazz, did you pick jazz or do you think jazz picked you? Well, you know, I was I was. I studied flute, and I was a, I was a natural on flute. I, I played, I could I could play pretty much any tune without looking at the music. But I was also trained a little bit as a classical musician, which I didn't really take take to that that much. You know, it was good, it was okay, but I didn't love it. And then all of a sudden, uh, my mother gave me a record, and other people gave me recordings of of American musicians like Sonny Rollins and like Zoot Sims and and Sonny Stitt and Dexter Gordon, and I was you know. I was I was in heaven. I I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't put it down. I just loved it so much. Yeah, beautiful. It, just, it was me. It was it was me. You know, I just listened to it. And to this day, you know, I listen to Dexter Gordon and and Sonny Rollins and all those guys. And, and I'm 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 in heaven. You know, it's, it's nothing to me is more beautiful than this music. And you know, I'm surprised that you know uh, that the audience for this music is so limited. It should be so huge for my money. But anyways. Yeah, no, we'll leave amen. It, we'll leave it at that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're preaching the choir with that for sure. Um, <clears throat> why did you choose the tenor sax? Why? I think the tenor tenor sax, and I think jazz also chose me. Uh, you know, I start. I, I listened to the saxophone. I I loved it. I loved the the way it looks, you know, and uh, and everything around it. And I, I was pretty natural at at actually getting getting to know the saxophone, playing the tenor saxophone. And it was very similar to flute, and I started on flute. The fingerings is pretty much the same. I just had to master the mouthpiece and, and that, and, and uh, it, it was it, it, it just it was there. I don't know. I guess it was my my destiny. So your first taste of international performance was in '78, representing Israel on a European tour of Israeli folk music and dance. What was that like for you? <laughs> yeah, that was funny. That was a funny, very very funny tour. We won't get into details because. Uh, <laughs> the radio is not going to like it. But um, <laughs> this is what you tell. But it was a funny tour, you know. I was just playing flute, and and uh, it it wasn't the music was the music was great. It was dancing, and it was you know I had a lot of fun regardless. You know, it was it was a lot of fun, and and and, and I loved playing and performing, and I really enjoyed it. You know, but it yeah. wasn't jazz. But it wasn't jazz. Nothing nothing is like jazz. Playing jazz is is you know is is just a it's another level of of being you know, of 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 serious of serious studying and commitment and and it's, there's so many levels of 
of depth that you can talk about when it comes to this kind of music, you know, and and uh, it just it, it takes so long and so much commitment, you know, to to play it. It's not written music, as you well know, and and you know. What's it like when you're on stage? I mean, you talk about the labor of love that goes into jazz. What is it like to be on stage with a crowd that's totally into it and you're just nailing it with the band? Is there anything that's as good as that musically? For me, well, for me, this is all I know, you know. It, it, to me, I mean, I know Steely Dan and musicians like that, you know. I think they're in the same, you know, same zone probably and and I love Steely Dan and I love but for but jazz when you're in the zone and you play a great solo and uh even if you have like you know one chorus or two minutes of of great playing it it it, it makes your whole evening and your whole week you know it's yeah. it's a be there's nothing to, to me you're in the moment you know and if you do well which is not easy to do when you play jazz it's not easy to be creative and it's it's really difficult. It's, you know, it, it takes so much discipline and work on stage, and so much co- so much commitment from from the band members too. You know, they have to be open to give you what you need, and and it's just a labor of, you know, you have to be you have to be a great improviser and, and a virtuoso, but you also have to listen, and you have to be part of the band. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, for sure. So in '86, you come to America and you go to the Berklee School of Music. What was that transition in your life from a cultural standpoint and just getting here and studying jazz performance? What was that like for you? Man, that was was a a transition that was just so... um, It was was almost a mystery to me. You know, when I I got to this country... I I grew up on a kibbutz. Let's just start there. And I came here and... It's a completely different environment, and I went to Berkeley and and I met all these musicians, and it blew my mind because they're so amazing. You know, some of these musicians, I thought I was great, you know, and I yeah. came here, and all of a sudden I'm standing next to incredible musicians uh, at the age of eighteen, seventeen, and I'm already, you know, after military, I'm twenty something, you know, and and these guys, man, wow, they 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 just played great, and it was I was in awe, you know, I was I was. I was I was in heaven and I was also scared and I was also you know I just like what what was were they thinking you know it was a great experience absolutely incredible experience so those first early experiences with both gigs and being around musicians what now is you've put some mileage behind you in that first set of years here what did you learn the most what's really stuck with you in those early years at Berkeley and being in America you know I have to say. Uh, being in America was, was is one of the most beautiful things that ever happened to me. I think it's one of the greatest. It really is an incredible place for many reasons, which we probably shouldn't get into because it's because it's you can talk about it for hours and hours on end. But it's yeah. a very accept, accepting place, you know. Um, I wouldn't want to be an immigrant in any other country, and and this country is for me is is as an Israeli, it's it's really an honor to be here and, and a great and a great. It was a great experience. What I've learned, however, from from being at Berkeley and from studying with masters around the Boston area, is the commitment. That's what I learned. What what it takes to become a great jazz musician, a great yeah. saxophone player, which was my goal. You know, all I wanted to be is a master master saxophone player, and and I wanted to write great music. And I've learned in a very short short period of time from a few guys. What it takes to become one of those guys, what it the commitment that that it takes, and that's yeah. the biggest lesson I've learned. Absolutely. So you've talked about those early jazz albums that you listened to, like Sonny Rollins. Well, who would you consider your jazz heroes that you really well, looked up to? <clears throat> you know, I'm a really straight ahead kind of guy, and um, my heroes are are the same guys that I that I heard first, Sonny Rollins. Dexter Gordon, um, Sonny Steve, Steve Grossman is a more current guy. You know, he's 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 still in the scene here now. Uh, he is really one of my heroes. And Joe Henderson and and all those guys and Ken Bolatterly and Charlie Parker. And uh, wow, you know, that's 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 the list is really long. You know, but that's enough for me. 
respect I have for those guys and, and you know, and Stan Getz and those guys, you know, it's just. Well, if you could get into a spaceship and go back in time and meet anybody in jazz, who would it be and what would you want to talk to them about? You know, I would want to, I would, I would want to meet, I haven't met Dexter and I would love, I would have loved to meet Dexter Gordon and yeah. John Coltrane. I guess that yeah. would be my, my choice. Sonny Rollins is still alive. I have uh, I have a, a, a beautiful picture of his on my wall uh, with a dedication. So I haven't met him, but but maybe I will. And yeah. uh, but those two guys, you know, I would, if I could have met those two guys, that would have been a, a great gift. But right on, they're they're here in, in spirit for me. I yeah, listen to them every day. I, I listen to them every day, and so they're going to be here forever. That's for sure. Oh well, um, yeah. Well, um. Are, is there anybody out there in the realm of modern jazz that you would love to, to get on stage and play with at some point? You know, um, at this point, yes, I would love to play with all those guys. You know, there's so many great musicians right now on, on the scene. You know, and I and I have played with a couple of my couple of my real heroes. I've played with one of them will be George Garzon, and I've played with him quite a few times, and. Uh, He's really one of my favorite musicians right now on the scene, George yeah. Garzon. Um, and, um, yeah, I, however, I would love to, you know, there's a lot of great other musicians like Eric Alexander and, 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 and Steve Grossman. I would love to actually maybe share the stage with this guy and uh, and learn from him. And, uh, there's, wow, there's so many people, I, you yeah. know. Yeah, 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 absolutely. What is the greatest thing about waking up every day? The greatest thing for me to, you know, is, I don't know, a cup of coffee, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I love coffee. I'm I'm hooked on coffee. You know, I love a great espresso first thing in the morning. That makes me happy to be, just to get up for for the taste of a great great uh, espresso, and uh, okay. and then thinking and then thinking about music. You know, Pandora right on my on my computer when I'm reading the news. And then yeah. going down down the, to the basement to practice. I love practicing. I practice all the time. Yeah. I practice four or five hours a day, and I think about music all the time, and uh, you know, and listen to music, and and you know, and and it's life too. You have to live life if you want to play. If you want to play happy music and, and joyful music, you have to enjoy life too. You can't just be a slave to the instrument, which you need to be to become yeah. become a good musician when it comes to when it comes to this kind of music. It's very serious. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And speaking of living life, you've lived it well. You have a great bio. You have a great story. Um, what What would you say is the most interesting thing about you? Well, first of all, thank you so much, Joe. You, 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 wow, well, you're so kind, and it's such a great interview. You know, um, the most interesting thing about me, I don't know how to answer that. You know. Uh, the fact that you know, in my short life of fifty-four years, I've lived, I've, I've seen a lot of things in my life. Some of them were not so pleasant, you know. Yeah. I've been to war. I served in one of the most demanding militaries in the world. Yeah. Um, I've seen a lot of, I've seen a lot of lives that are that didn't end that well, and um, and I, I cherish life, and I, and life is really. It's really near and dear to me, you know. I, I, it's, I, I respect it. I, I'm careful and 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 I'm kind. I try to be kind, you know, because, you know, <clears throat> I know how precious life is. I've seen it lost, you know, for quite a few people, yeah. and uh, and I guess that's that's where my respect comes from, and right. music too. <clears throat> music, that's where I plug in. Yeah, I'm not really absolutely. Just, I'm not religious, right. but you know, when I listen to music and when I play music, that's how I plug into this world. Yeah. That's what relaxes me. That's what brings me happiness and love. Yeah, it's beautiful. I have no doubt that you're going to be around with more discs as, as time goes on with your quality music. What is next for you as far you know, a next album or projects or touring? What's 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 on the horizon for you? Well, I'm, I'm always <clears throat> I'm going to be touring soon, so I'm always trying to go to Europe and playing play playing new places and reach new new people and uh, meet new people and new musicians. 
And uh, so that's always that's always there. You know, we try to actually go to as many places as we can. The other thing about, you know, I'm writing music right now for my next recording, and I'm not a planner. You know, I never plan. I, I try to be as – it's not that I try. That's who I am. I, I'm just always – you know, I go down and I and I write and whatever comes out, great. You know, and and that's how I build my next CD and my next recording. And hopefully, it's going to be good. Yeah, yeah. Tell me this: What do you think personally is the coolest thing about jazz? The coolest thing about jazz is the freedom of it, the sound of it. Um, the, it's it's just so cool, and it's, it's the, the swing, the way it swings. And um, the way it makes you feel, uh, there's so many elements to it because it's, this music is so deep. There's so many things to this music to master. And everybody is great at one or two or three things, you know. And it's just so... Uh, every, every, every player is an individual, you know. And everybody is different. You can try to imitate somebody as much as you can, but you're not going to sound like them. Yeah. And it reflects the way you feel during the day. You know, it, it reflects reflects your 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 how you what your mental state. And and if you're happy, you're gonna be you're gonna play happy music. If you're miserable, you're gonna that's it's gonna be heard. You know. Yeah. And so and and I I don't know. It's it's endless of what's so hip and great about this music. Yeah. It's definitely the music of the future. You know, it's it's just it's just people need to just try to give it a shot and to listen to good jazz. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. And, and I think it, it will do it will do them great. Yeah, absolutely. You're definitely a wise person, and, and I want to pose this question at you. Let's say in ten years, we're both a little bit wiser. What What do you think? What do you want to tell me happened in the last decade of your life? What do you What would you like to see happen in your career and as a person? How would How would you like to see your life go? Maybe even twenty years. Just you know, at that point when you can kind of lean back, have a cup of coffee in the morning and say, bam, this is what I'm thinking right now about my life. Well, I'd like, I'd like to actually, well, number one is to be, uh, I hope that I'm happy all the time. You know, that's number one for me. I just want to be happy and, and, and I want to be accepting everybody. And I, I, would, I just want to play great music and, and, and touch as many people as, as, as I can with my music, hopefully make them happy. And change yeah. your life. I do. I did some. I did a tour recently in Iowa, and uh, we played in a hospital. Believe it or not, and uh, it was part of the tour. We, we we did a couple of concerts, and we got paid very nicely. We tried to make them as happy as we could, you know. And and I think we t- we touched a lot of them, and they were, you know, they came up to us and say, "Wow, this was so much so nice, and we had so much joy." And that's what life is all about, you know. For me, it's you know, if I can do that every day, that'll be not maybe not every day, but four times a week, three times a week. In 20 years, that'll be awesome. Yeah, absolutely. That that right there, I think, Benny, I think that's the perfect way to end this interview. That's a great answer and a great <laughs> hopeful look yeah. into the future, for sure. Well, thank you so much. You're, you're such a you're such a honey of a guy, man. I really appreciate hey, it. Thank you, man. I love you guys. You guys you guys tirelessly do things. I love jazz and what you guys do all the time. It's such a labor of love, and you guys are forces. It's beautiful to be able to just kind of round into your orbit just a little bit to to, to put your story out there and make sure the world knows that what you're doing is quality stuff. Thank you so much, Joe. What an honor. Thanks for listening and tuning in to yet another Neon Jazz interview, where we give you a bit of insight into the finest players in Boston, Kansas City, and spots all over America, giving fans all that jazz. And thanks to the very hip, honest, and soulful Benny Sharoni for giving the world his unique blend of jazz. If you want to hear more interviews, go to Famous Interviews with Joe Domino on the iTunes Store, or you can always visit the neonjazz.blogspot.com for all things Neon Jazz. Until next time, enjoy the music, my friends. Neon Jazz.